Eight. The beta released um, about a month and a half ago. Um, who? Just a show of hands, no voices. Uh, who's working with CentOS or RHEL in a personal or professional capacity? Okay, so a good chunk of the room. Um, so I think mo many of us are still getting used to seven, uh, despite it being around for the better part of three years now. Uh, but uh, yeah, Red Hat Eight is finally on the horizon. Uh, I've been, I downloaded the beta, I've been playing around with it, and I'm just going to give you a quick idea of my impression so far. Um, it is a Fedora 28 derivative. Uh, so if you've been kicking around the Fedora community for your desktop or personal use, you already know what to expect from the package versions, uh, which is finally something modernly reasonable, including Python 3, which gives us this beautiful uh, blog post from Red Hat going, no Python in Red Hat 8? No. No. What has happened is modularity has occurred. So what is modularity? Well, we got a bit of a diagram here. Um, this is a project that's been going on in the Fedora camp for well over a year now. Uh, what they came to realize when it came to package development uh, was that there is definitely different rates of change in the ecosystem. Packages, rev, upstream software packages, some rev faster than the distros, some rev really slow and don't change. And so the methodology around how the packages was built was based on a release concept. You had your, your uh, revision controlled repo of the sources and the build uh, spec files. And you had one branch for each release. And this was pretty static. It meant that for a package that changed once a year or once every few years, you were, con you were maintaining multiple branches, three in the case of Fedora, uh, four or five in the case of CentOS and RHEL, uh, depending on how far back, and the contents could literally be the same. Um, and so Fedora itself has been a pretty stable environment for the last five years. And so a lot of questions have been asked about, and amongst the community, how do we reduce the administrative load and better work with the release cycles of the upstream projects? And that's where the modularity came from. This is a fundamental change to how uh, repositories work and how uh, the software is packaged. Uh, they've retooled the infrastructure, uh, a piece of software called Koji and the related packages that does the actual build uh, to work on arbitrary tagging as opposed to release-based tagging. Um, so release-based tagging finally says we can start tracking packages based on the package versions Inst uh, sorry, uh, arbitrary tagging instead of release-based tagging where uh, we're tracking the, the source based on what release of the OS it's going into. And so you can actually now start building the packages against multiple targets. So if you want Python 2, you build it for Fedora 28, 29, 20, uh, and 30 right off the bat out of the same tag instead of having the 28 tag and building Python 2 and having it. It gets easier. So let's take that back to this controversial uh, blog post. Why no Python 8 in Bell Beta? The modularity uh, now tracks the dependencies between these arbitrary tags. So Red Hat with working with the Fedora community, has made the decision that there's no default Python installed in the system. There is a version of Python hidden away for very critical system applications, but it's not the system Python that the applications use. Instead, there is a tag in the package managers, uh, the, a module, or an app stream, depending on the parlance, um, where you say, I want to install Python 2 or Python 3. And it will actually track 
which other modules and applications depend on Python 2 or Python 3. And if you try to remove one, it will say these modules depend on it and stop you. Or say, do you want to remove these as well? And then you can now actually start doing mutual exclusion between these modules. So in the uh, uh, CentOS 6 days, we had both Apache 2.2 and Apache 2.4. And the distro only supported 2.2. And if you wanted 2.4 on it, you had to build it yourself. And this caused all sorts of headaches in codependencies like PHPs and uh, Apache modules and all sorts of things. And the solution they had at the time was um, software collections, where they basically put everything in Cheroot and then forget to update it. <laughs> it was a pain in the ass. Now there's a method in DNF, YUM's replacement, the RPKM packaging, the repositories to say, if, I don't, if, if Apache 2.6 comes along, don't worry, I don't need it. Um, you can uninstall 2.4 and all its dependencies, or, or its dependents, the things that depend on it, and install 2.6 and say, 2.6 is where I want to go. And this is what I was talking about with Python. We now can say the system Python is 2.7 or the system Python is 3, but not both, and no confusion. You know what you're depending on, and you can look at it that way. So the remaining question you might have in your head is, where do I try this? This has gotten stupidly easy for commercial software. Big asterisk there. You can now register for the Red Hat Developer Program, and is literally just fill in your name, fill in your login, and you're done. Go find the uh, 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 Red Hat beta page for download. While logged in, click the checkbox that says I accept the license terms, and it will generate you a license immediately. And then you can just subscribe the Red Hat system per usual procedures. So if you want to get a taste on how this works, it's available in Fedora 29 server. Uh, if you want to see how Red Hat has flavored it, go check out the beta. I've got two minutes left. Head up to the mics if you got questions. This is kind of an open-ended question. How is there any plan to integrate uh, packaging system for uh, programming languages like PyPy, Eggs, or R Ruby Gems, or anything like that into the Red Hat 8? I have not looked that far into it, so I can't say. Okay, thank you. Hi, I was hacking around with Fedora 28 on a on a scrap laptop, and I did the install. I just did a straight default install, mm -hmm. sort of somebody somebody non computer geek could possibly do. Um, when I finished it, I started looking to see what programming stuff was there, and I found Make GCC uh, Python 2.7 by the looks of it. Um, I found I had to install G plus plus and one or two other things to get a full if I wanted a full programming environment. Obviously, for a non-techy user, that they probably wouldn't be aware of that. But what, what's installed with Red Hat Enterprise? Like, like what's the difference between that and Fedora Twenty Eight? Um, like all systems, it depends. <laughs> um, so the default install is actually pretty minimal. Um, but if you use the graphical installer, you have your uh, opportunity to select various package groups. One of them is the develop uh, development group. Um, For non-technical users, I think the right answer is managing packages and pulling in the software you need and want is part of the learning experience of becoming a developer. Um, so, I mean, if they're looking, if they're looking for, if they're looking for soft, if they're looking for software development packages, then they're quite a bit more sophisticated than, than yeah, I was sort uh, of investigating. But I was curious about it anyway. Uh, again, again, it depends. You, you have to install your dependencies for what you want to do. No more alternatives? Um, I can only have Python 2.7 or 3. I can't, like, symlink stuff around? So modularity uh, now encodes certain exclusions, yes. You can always install from source if you want another. You know, extra... 
distro, like outside yeah. of the distro, effectively. Yeah, if you want to roll your own, hell, at this point, you can now roll your own module and say, I want to install that. So in the previous problem, the reason why you couldn't do Apache 2.4 was because the Red Hat people hadn't gotten around to doing a 2.4. And then they finally did get around to 2.4, and now you've got the Apache and the Apache 2.4, like a whole tree of things that go along with it. No, How the, is that different than this? Um, the, pro the problem with that, the previous system, was that 2.4 wasn't native. It was a cherooted environment. They didn't upgrade the base system. They didn't give you an option to just replace 2.2. They gave you a sidecar in which you could run 2.4. This mm -hmm. says, I want to replace 2.2 with 2.4. And now it knows what depended on 2.2 and can safely remove it and replace it with the equivalents up top for 2.4. I don't. I don't remember there being a. I use an RPM and it installs my software in a cheroot. This was what was called software collections. Very few people used it. Because the packages that were in the software collections, which also had very interesting naming conventions for the uh, repos and packages, because they couldn't conflict with the uh, package names of the primary. Now we can have conflicting package names because they're attached to the modules. Can you give me an example? If I want to install Python. Yes. Do you mean 2.7 or 3? Well, if I just say install Python, there it's is no default. Ask. It'll say, there, I don't have Python, yeah. because you didn't say which version. Yes. It's, it's about being a little more explicit about what's in your system and about which versions of software you're working with. It's, this is still a lot of open territory to be explored, but it's a good change for, in my mind, for getting more adoption of newer versions of software over the life cycle of a, a RHEL. Uh, because if you, you decide you're done with the older version, you can know that you've pulled it out completely. Thank you.